Hi, this is Darren Drew of D. Drew Guitars. Here's this fretboard that I'm making. This is basically what it's going to be. This is what it's going to look like once it's done, approximately. So, what I've done first is I've gotten my piece, my pieces cut out. My binding came from the same pieces that the neck came from. And what I did was I trimmed it off at the very beginning after I had a straight edge. I trimmed it off on my table saw. And then I just literally cut it in half like this, you know, this way to get the two pieces. And what I'm going to accomplish is because it's easier to cut something off of a big piece of board than it is a small one. And then, so I have my pieces here in which I have them marked where they go um, because I'm going to have my grain matching so that when my grain on the outside piece finally touches the, the neck, hopefully the grain's going to match up. But when I mark this, I want to mark it on the inside because this is a perfectly flat edge. And how I get that perfectly flat edge is this is a drum sander. But more than that, when this is on the big piece of wood, I will take this over to my table saw where I have sandpaper, my fence, and I'll sand it back and forth. And believe me, but it gives me a perfect straight edge. And more than that, it gives me a perfect 90 degree angle from here to here, which is very important for doing binding like this. Um, I don't have all the glue presses or clamp, you know, I just garage at home. So, but I spent probably two hours doing this to get this the exact width that I want it here and here. And I even write that all down on here and what I want it to be per piece of binding even that I'm putting on. So I don't have to read, measure and calculate all the time. So... I probably have two hours in just sanding this to get it where I want it. And also, I had to sand both edges of my neck to get it exactly the same size as I want it. Because this wood, the grain really changes drastically on it. So I wanted to get the grain as close as possible. So I had to have this exactly the size I want it before I can match up my grain on my binding to match this. And, you know, that was another hour probably to sand it, getting it perfectly flat. And what you can do to, to make sure you get it perfectly flat, get a pencil, mark the, mark the whole thing along here, and then sand it on your tabletop here. And you'll see exactly when the pencil lines go away. And then you know you, it's perfectly flat and a perfect 90 degree right here, which that's a must for doing something like this at home. Okay, so, and I have all three of my pieces. They're all marked. And I've done them the same way. So I'm going to remove these out of the way for right now because I don't need them. And like I said, on the inside of here, I know it's perfectly flat already because I flattened it on my table saw like that first. And I have it marked which one's on the inside. So that I know that these two, this glue joint is going to be perfect. And also I have it already cut to proper length. So that these two are exactly the same length as the fretboard will be. So it will be like this. So when I clamp it together, all I got to do is make sure both ends are nice and flat all the way across. And that way it's easier to do than just a pencil line, you could say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over to the edge. I like a nice flat surface to, to do my glue joints on. That way it stays nice and flat as I'm going to glue it. So I'll just... Tilt these to where my writing is up. And first what I'll do is I'll bring this kind of over to the edge. Eh, doesn't have to be that close, but. And I will clamp down my piece of wood here so that it stays exactly flat, for one, and exactly where I want it. And I'll bring the two pieces of binding with my clamps to the major part of the fretboard. If that makes any sense. So what I'll what will happen is I'll clamp this now and then it will pull these two pieces together with this being solidly down already. Let's clamp this down in a few places. That's free. Okay, now I'll get my glue. Okay, I have my glue here. I like Elmer's wood glue, actually. It's my favorite. 
But what I'll do is I'll pour it on this piece of wood on this part. And it's going to have some squeeze out, which is normal. And this is a little bit messy, especially the way I'm doing it with this part already clamped down. But, okay, that'll be plenty. So then what I'll do is I'll spread this out nice and even. And you're probably wondering why I use paper underneath. I use paper because it doesn't get my wood black from the tabletop here. And the paper is real easy to sand off after I'm going to sand it to make it all nice and level. Okay, so I got enough glue on here. So I'll put this in place. Like I said, it's going to have plenty of squish out, squeeze out, whatever. And then I will do the same thing here. Use some of this glue here. If at all possible. Try to be thrifty as I'm doing my projects. This bottle of glue is about empty, but... Here we go. Okay. Spread this out all evenly all the way across. And a lot of times I've always been taught to, to glue both sides of the wood, but when you put on this amount of glue, it's going to be plenty and it's going to get everywhere as long as I make sure it's everywhere on here and there's plenty of it. Okay, so then I'll match up my ends. Pretty much like this. I'll put on my first clamp, and I'm just going to use these type of clamps. They don't use all that much pressure, but they're going to be plenty. I have the rubber tips off on them. So I'm going to get my first one, clamp it here at the end. And as I do so, I'm going to leave just a little gap there because I want to make sure, and this is going to be the top of the fretboard, I want to make sure that the wood is all the way down, so I'll just make sure I'll tap it down, tighten my clamp a little bit, and I know that this part's already on the surface because I have it clamped, then I'll get another one, and these don't aren't super strong like a C-clamp, but they're going to be plenty to hold it in place, and see how that started to lift up, so I don't want that, but I'll do that. I'll tap it back down on both of them. And I'll, since I have four clamps like this, I'll use four of them. Use my hammer again. Tap that down. And then my last one. Make sure my ends are good, and this one here is a little bit that way, so I'll see if I can just tap it down. But I'm good on this end, so that's going to be good. Make sure that that's down, and then I'll get a couple other clamps, and I'll clamp them, tighten these up as much as I can. Now... And see that looks good on the ends so that hopefully is good I'll just get a couple more clamps and I'll just clamp them like this and I'm not really concerned about leaving clamp marks on the outside of the wood here due to the fact that I'm gonna have to sand it down on my table saw and sandpaper and fence once this dries I'll sand it on there to make it another uh, 90 degree angle perfect and I will get it to the exact width that I want it also. So I'm not really worried about leaving clamp marks. Otherwise, on most wood gluing things, you will, you should be. But with this, I'm really not. So then there, that should be good. Let it sit for two days. And then, um, and if you're standing over here to make these two pieces of wood, exactly the width that you want them because I have a specific millimeter that I want each set of the bindings. If one is like 
two millimeters off the other's one. You would just put more pressure on one side of the other as you're sanding over there or on the drum center. You would just go slower until you got it closer to the right um, thickness that you would like it. Okay, well, that's enough for now. I'll show you the next step later. This is Darren Drew. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll continue on teaching you how to do a really custom fretboard that will look like this. Thank you.